We're going to do a review of a record player here, portable record player. It's a one by one, and we'll find out what it is when we get the box open. This record player was uh, sent in by one by one uh, for me to review, and Chris and I are going to open the box here and have a look at um, what we got. This came through Amazon, so uh, shipping and that would be handled through them. It's the one by one belt driven Bluetooth turntable with built in stereo speaker, vintage style record player, vinyl to MP3 recording. Um, don't see a uh, model number. Quite heavy, actually. There we go. Show the symbol there on the side. And we're going to try and do a fairly thorough review of this turntable. There you go, three boxes, and there it is. What's it say there at the other? Converts records to MP3 on your USB stick. Yep. So this this would be good for somebody who maybe has a, a record collection, maybe an older person that wants to get their old vinyl on the phone uh, easily, or um, you know maybe someone who's just getting into vinyl. Oh, I see a desiccant bag. We have our salad mm -hmm. topping. This is the power supply. It's a little uh, switcher type deal. So you've got a plastic uh, platter, kind of like what we've seen on the Crosleys. Dust cover. That's interesting. It's actually got the strobe disc thing built right in. At least it, that's look like that looks like what that is, right there on the molded into the turntable. The uh, the strobe pattern for speed. On off volume, and I don't really see a way to adjust speed. Do you? Uh, it might be internal. We found the paper. Um, we found the paper directions here, so we're going to take a look at that and it's see. In English and Spanish. So we'll we'll kind of take a look at this and. I don't know if we want to read this in the review, do we? Right. Let's read through that and then we'll come back. Unpacking and setup. So once you get it unpacked, you plug in the adapter that plugs into the back rear panel here on the unit. And then there's this yellow note explaining this transit screw needs to be screwed all the way down so you turn it clockwise. And I assume that it's a, as you can see, it's a spring loaded mount. And turning this in, freeze it up. You've got a lockdown for the uh, tone arm and a uh, cartridge stylus protector. This white plastic piece supposedly comes off. Once you get the transport screw, screwed in all the way. You want to take the stylus cover off, which looks like it kind of slides forward like that. When you move the tone arm over to your record, it turns on the uh, drive motor. So 
so we found the speakers are on the bottom firing downward and it looks like a, a stereo setup tries to be they're very close together a left and a right and then a center that looks like a, it might be a, an attempt at a, a woofer or a passive radiator now I think we should open this set and have a look yeah, we'll uh, as part of the review uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the Bluetooth pairing. Okay. So to uh, use the Bluetooth amp function on this, you press the BT button down and hold it until the blue light flashes. Then take your device you want to pair with it, whether it's your phone or whatever, and uh, it uh, pairs right up very easily. Yeah, we're going to demonstrate that. This is just... Uh the mics and the camera and the speakers in the unit so go ahead and press play and we'll it doesn't sound bad it's definitely better than the phone without the amplifier on it it's fairly loud I would say right and it sounds pretty good it's fairly balanced I think Maybe we can just talk about it while the lawnmower warms up outside <laughs> so this has a line out on the back why don't you say what you're gonna say about the the pool thing and all that okay this could be a fun unit if you're doing a barbecue or something outside and you've got power you can plug it in out there and you can play your records on it you don't have to bring any speakers or anything and you could sync your phone up to it or your friends could sync their phones up to the Bluetooth and play their music to it so it kind of has that possibility this has a actual RCA line output too and um, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary in so if you wanted to use it with something that provided audio on that you could so you could if you had this plugged into your sound system you could use this as the Bluetooth receiver for your sound system as well as the turntable I'm assuming that that the audio from the Bluetooth receiver comes out of the line output jacks. We could check that. Uh, the Bluetooth is not bi-directional. It's only a receiver. It's not going to broadcast the record you're playing uh, back to another device or amplifier or something like that. Okay, we're going to pop the bottom off of this and have a look at the inside, so go ahead and uh, we'll get it open and we'll see what the electronics and mechanism look like. The debris from the um, press board. Yeah. Just on a personal note, this is uh, an interesting review for me to do. My background is in a nightclub for a lot of years and of course all we used were the, was the Techniques SL1200. And the SL-1200, I would almost consider that to be a, a piece of military spec gear. It's such a robust, hardcore. But I, I realize that not, not everyone can afford that or has the preamp and the equipment that maybe wants something more portable. So we're going to... Um, we're going to give this a good overview and see. That's interesting, isn't it? So here's a look inside. You've got standby. Should I just hold it here? Yeah, I'll, right. I'll give it to me and I'll bring it into the picture. But go ahead, it's rolling. <laughs> So obviously this is a, a passive radiator here and you can see that the chamber is all the same because if you push on this the two outside speakers uh, respond. 
So that increased the base response. Now it looks like we have some, some vibration isolation here, which uh, is a good thing. It would prevent hum feedback, turntable feedback. And so uh, here's our on-off volume control, and then our wires for the speakers come into this uh, amplifier board over here that also has your line out for your home stereo. And there's a ribbon cable that connects that to the control panel at the front of the unit. The, uh, the turntable drive is kind of like other um, drives that we've seen for the Crosley. It's got what looks like a tape recorder DC motor with a, uh, a large bypass capacitor on it. And I'm going to assume that this might be the speed ad okay. adjustment yeah, right there. Probably. The... Uh, audio leads for the tone arm for the cartridge are also brought into that black cable on the same connector as the motor power you so, know you know one thing i am not seeing in this is the hot glue we have uh, we have um stapled down um yeah there's a little bit right there but as far as the actual unit goes it's mostly a stapled down um, wire ties the uh, construction it looks to be MDF it's pretty heavy here it's probably at least half an inch so that's what kind of makes the whole unit a little heavier than the usual stuff we've seen is uh, yeah that dampens the vibration and feedback and does does actually improve the quality of the playback we wanted to take a look at the audio amp that drives the speakers. This is rated at 2 watts RMS per channel, and uh, this board is not easily coming out. So I don't know if it's glued in or, or some hidden screws. But uh, looking at the back side of that board, it's just several surface mount um, integrated circuits. N no through hole stuff at all. <laughs> Okay, some things we notice about the record player function on this. Don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's definitely some 60 cycle hum when you turn the volume control all the way up. The uh, Q lever, we, we were having some trouble with that. It would not play records without skipping, and we found that the Q lever is not going completely down and we might be able to get a side shot on this but I'm having to push it down with my finger so that it's not resting against the tone arm and, and keeping the tone arm from tracking uh, properly so not sure if that would wear in with time it looks like there's some lubricant here in the uh, where the uh, cueing arm is where the mechanism is but uh, it's not enough another thing we noticed was the motor noise which has been reported on other reviews in the 78 speed you can definitely hear the motor running and it also couples through a little bit to the cartridge as you can hear the motor sound out of the speakers uh, the thing weighed in at between six and seven grams so it's a pretty heavy tracking pressure to, we didn't weigh that in the video, but I did weigh it, and that's what it's tracking at. Fairly heavy. Okay, we're going to come in. I'm going to come in kind of close, and uh, we'll show the, the noise. And 45... It's barely detectable at 45 and very, very minor at 33. Another issue that we notice with the tone arm Q lever is that when it's engaged, you can't engage it without the arm swinging out 
and the motor turning on. Yeah, it's it's um, like it's spring loaded here, and it doesn't swing out to the beginning of the record. You, you're you're ending up a good inch past the start of the grooves, so you're kind of fighting a spring loaded mechanism there, which is you see it to, difficult. To, you to have to with. bring it back and drop it, and yeah, then it's just no easy way to start it at the beginning of the the track. So you end up having to start it by hand. Why don't you get a shot of the side showing the zoom in close, showing the um, and I'll, I'll the, the lack of running. the lack of clearance. Yeah, and I'll push it down while you're. The cue lever is all the way down, and here we're illustrating how the tone arm rest is still in contact with the tone arm, causing it to miss track, skip across tracks because the full weight uh, is not able to be put on the needle. So I take my finger and push the mechanism down, and there's still a few millimeters of play in there. To get it all the way down. Okay, it's fairly loud. Uh, it's it leans pretty heavy on the high end, wouldn't you say, as far yeah. as the... Um, All the sound is being reflected off of whatever surface it's sitting on, if you use the internal speakers. So you don't want to have it sitting on carpet or something that would absorb the sound. I wouldn't say the stereo imaging is necessarily bad from it because it is bouncing all over the place. Uh, but it's not going to give you that defined left and right if you're listening to some old Doors or Beatles or something like that. You're going to completely miss that, that what that engineer was trying to get through in that music, get across with that wide stereo sound. Uh, I think one of the features of this, one of the selling points is the USB recording and the line outs. So what we want to do is we want to record a song to the USB stick and we want to see how that sounds and then I think we should um, pull the line out out of the record player directly into the camera and do an actual A-B comparison in the video editor. I'll just drop the MP3 file into the editor and I'll just cut back and forth between what the camera gets directly out of the line out and what the mp3 that it records sounds like because if it if it is if it does record a good quality mp3 it it's fairly useful don't you think i mean it rather than the way i record mp3 net mp3s now is i have to go from my sl1200 through a preamp into the computer and then use recording software and it takes a while to set it all up and do it and then save the file. So if this is just plug it in and play it and it's there and it's good quality, then that's uh, that's kind of beneficial. Especially for some of the, maybe the 78s or the older records that weren't high fidelity. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how you can queue up a record on this thing given all the flaws in the queuing mechanism. Um, I have BT Bluetooth mode selected here on the control panel. And doing so prevents the motor from starting. So I'm going to line up the needle at the beginning of the record like so. And then I'm going to switch to phono mode. It takes a few seconds for the audio to kick in. So I do that again because there, there was a huge delay there. There is. And there is anyway. Well, it's not intended to be used like this. Right. So, we're just trying to find a workaround for this weird queuing.
and I can hear it's jumping tracks. <laughs> Next, we're going to display the USB thumb drive recording. I've inserted a 4 gigabyte thumb drive there. It's got some stuff on it already. Uh, it's got about 2 gigabytes free. We have, uh, for your listening pleasure, the Commodore's Brick House. I've selected that because this needle and tone arm is like setting a brick on the record. First thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to record about 30 seconds of this and I'm going to drop the file that's recorded onto the stick into the video editor and then on the second pass we'll record the same song directly into the camera from the line outputs and at 10 seconds the audio is going to change from what was recorded onto the stick by the turntable to what the camera recorded from the line output so go ahead and cue it up and let's See what we get. When you push that, the USB stick started flashing. So, what the? So once you've made your recording onto the USB drive and you plug it into your computer, you'll find that the turntable has created a directory called record. And your file will be there, I guess, sequentially numbered. If you do multiple ones, I assume it will it will uh, sequentially uh, note them. Like right now it's rec001. And we went ahead and opened this file and we looked at some of the uh, information about it. And we found, listening through the headphones, we confirmed it is a mono recording. So it was not stereo. We didn't hear the stereo fidelity. And then the sampling rate was low. I was 16 kilohertz, which means the highest analog frequency you'd hope to hear would be 8 kilohertz. And we all know that a record can do much higher than that. It really should be sampling at something like 44.1, like a CD. Um, it encodes it into an MP3 at 160 kilobit per second uh, MP3. I would describe it as telephone. A telephone. They'd be much better to record this at 96 kilobit at 44.1. That would at least be a decent FM radio. In fact, I believe that's what YouTube compression is. Now this camera records at 256 at 44.1. 44 I would say that based on the specs, the file properties, that the, the internal recorder is, I don't know, maybe it's good for recording some spoken word or, or very minimal bandwidth uh, mono recording. It's definitely not good for any kind of music. It's completely worthless. Okay, we're trying to find the file. Apparently there were some other MP3s stored on this uh, USB drive that I wasn't even aware of. And we're trying to locate the one we just recorded. So obviously it will play back uh, MP3 files that were not recorded on it alone. So that's kind of cool. Wow, that sounds pretty bad. Go back to one of the other one of the other files that was recorded on there. You could definitely hear there's a quality difference there. Okay, so go ahead, go back to Brick House.
right, here's the next demonstration we're going to do. We've recorded uh, part of the song Easy by Lionel Richie and the Commodores onto the USB stick. First, we're going to listen to the recording off the USB stick, and then we're going to switch to the record, and you'll hear how poor the recording is with the low sampling rate. Uh, even played back on its own internal speakers, you can, there's an immense difference. So go ahead with the USB stick. Seems to me, girl, you know I've done all I can. Okay, go ahead, switch to the this is the record. Yeah. Ooh. That's why I'm easy. Okay, go back to the I'm USB. Easy like Sunday morning. Right, so where we were th we were thinking that this auxiliary in on the on the back of it might allow us to record something say cassette deck to the USB stick but this thing is um, it doesn't it does not record um, it disables the turntable so once we pull the audio in cord out it puts it back into uh, turn you know, turntable right. mode. So it's just acting as a external amplifier when you have something plugged into the input jack. I I would be curious about um, I would be curious about the uh, heat sinking of those surface mount amp, amp ICs. I would be almost curious to feed a uh, sine wave into that audio input and let it run for 20 or 30 minutes and see if, you know, if that IC would overheat and fail, perhaps, because 4 watts without any type of heat sink is uh, quite a bit. So we've decided, we're sitting here discussing, we, we watched some other reviews on YouTube and we're the very common complaint is the low recording quality. We're sitting here discussing why, what is that? Is that hardware or firmware? What do we, what do we have that's causing that? So we really want to, we really want to take the, um, try and get that board out and see what, what they're using here. It's got to have some type of processor in it, I would imagine. And maybe we can get a number off the chip and see what it takes. Uh, you know, what's what what's the hold back with this thing? You betcha, we got the claws cranking on this thing. All right, so we peeled this back, and there's a screw under here. So go ahead, back that out. Hey, you wanted a review? We're gonna do a review here. Let's look at the ICs that are used in this thing. So let me. Let me get under here with this. Try and hide the screws from me. The hell. Alright. This is your serviceability here. Alright, yeah, yeah, there we go. Gotta watch that ribbon cable. Yeah, that flat flex. All right, let's see what we got here. So there's our little processor right there, I would imagine, that little square guy. And it's probably all done in that. You see any numbers on these, or are they scraped off? I'll need your magnifier. I do see them, but I can't tell what they are. All right, none of these ICs are crossing to anything, so I decided to just we would put some kind of heavy music through it, 
and run it kind of hard and see which one was the audio amp. We were suspecting that one there was the audio amp. And I have a feeling that big blob of solder right there is their intended heat sink. And it's really, it's getting warm and just slightly warm. So, um, but I'm, I'm going to assume that this is the processor right here. What was the number on it? 8088 something? Yeah, 808894, and then the, the white chalk is covering up the rest. So we're not actually sure what's doing what here, but that's a look at the um, processing control, central control unit. And a YX. Uh, should we say thanks for sending it or not? Or Well, no, I... Or, I I enjoy doing the review. This is yeah. the first time I've done a review like this, so uh, this is this is something new for me. But if you want to talk for a minute about the shortcomings and the positives, I think we could do that. For me, the obviously the shortcomings are, uh, and keep in mind that I'm coming from a background of you know, pro audio and commercial and, you know, DJs that abuse the equipment and um, not really a consumer side of things. So for me, looking at this is a bit of maybe a struggle because I'm just not used to consumer audio stuff. Uh, of course, vintage is, you know, class of its own, totally separate from modern commercial commercial stuff. So the shortcomings for me are obviously the uh, lack of bass response. That's a huge one for me. It seems like the EQ needs to be adjusted. I'm sure that's maybe they're intentionally doing that because they had some type of a feedback or a low, low frequency rumble or they're dealing with something to where they had to equalize the bass off of it. But I, I expect more bass in something. Um, it's also reducing the bass as a trick to make something louder that's underpowered. Uh, so that's what the loudness control on a lot of stuff is. It increases the bass at a lower level and tapers it off as you increase the volume. That way you can have a lower powered amplifier and it still goes loud before it clips because it reduces the bass where the majority of the power is consumed. Um, the USB stick recording is an extreme disappointment to me. That to me would be the fe feature of this record player. Hey, I got some old record. I want to use that audio track in a video. Uh, let me just pop it on this thing, plug a stick in there, and we'll cache it to the stick, and then I can dump it in without all this big setup of the commercial gear. But that that's an extreme disappointment. I would highly suggest that they, if they got to go with that poor of a compression, switch it to 44.1 at 96 kilobits. That's the same that you're listening to this at, because that's what... YouTube compresses it down to, and that's FM, analog FM broadcast quality. Uh, the USB playback sounds pretty good. Why can't it record at a decent bit rate? Uh, so go go ahead, what do you... Yeah, so I think it's an ambitious product. It tries to um, perform a lot of different functions. You can hook it up to your home stereo. You can play back uh, from your phone into the Bluetooth uh, receiver amplifier. Um, again, the the lacking is in the uh, sampling rate of the MP3 recording. Also, the turntable itself is is a problem. It really, it's a consumer product, but I've seen consumer products that could track a lot better. This is having a lot of trouble now. There is a little bit of warpage to this record, but I don't think it's severe, and it, it should be able to handle that. It really shouldn't be skipping. The Q lever is a big problem. Um, we should be able to raise the arm without uh, having it swing over past the first track. It really, it's really a uh, you know kind of a distraction. And then we have the other problem where it does not retract fully. Again, that's a mechanical issue. I don't know if we got a dud here um, or what what happened there. But uh, the construction 
they tried to do a, a better job and make it uh, heavier MDF type construction but uh, the turntable in it is uh, probably the the mechanism is the weakest part the fit and finish is not bad I'll say that nothing stands out to me as sloppy or cheesy uh, I almost don't want to say it's gimmicky because it's really not I mean it does what it's designed to do and it just needs some refinements and I think we discussed now can we say anything positive about this it seems like the I'm not detecting any wow and flutter are you no you can I'm, take it portable you could take it outside or something and it has the built-in amplifier so you don't even have to have an at-home system to enjoy it so that's a plus and it, it, the sound quality is not bad as a standalone unit. I mean, just sitting here, you know, if you, were, if you were having a party and you wanted to play some old records, it's not bad. Um, it's not a console stereo or something that, you know, is loud, but it... Um, I, I would have to say it's a step above the Crosley. I really would. It's got a nice dust cover. Uh, it doesn't have a slot cut in the back of the record player, so the record sticks through the back like some kind of afterthought. There is some engineering and some thought into this. Um, I don't know. What else can you say about it? I think that pretty much wraps it up for me. Did this have a headphone output? I don't believe so. What was the 3.2 millimeter on the back? That's an auxiliary input, so it must allow you to use the amplifier with uh, something like an external MP3 player. We could turn this cord around and try it. Okay, so I don't have anything with an RCA source right now. So Now, I wonder if it will record um, from the auxiliary input to the yeah. MP3. You know, so if you had a cassette and you wanted to record it um, in this absolutely horrible sounding mono format, uh, maybe we should give that a try. I wanted to. Man, this baby's dirty. One thing I would mention also is. Um, that vinyl on a good good table with a good um, needle cartridge setup. Cover off. What? Um, really sounds good. Uh, a good good copy of a record on on good equipment really sounds amazing. And this just sitting here kicking back, this doesn't sound that bad with the speakers that are internal and stuff, but this recording system and the lack of low frequency could really give one the impression that vinyl is inferior to digital formats. And during my time in the club, I watched the transition from strictly DJs playing vinyl to digital formats, Serato, MP3s, and there was a definite drop off in the sound quality and the dynamic range of the music and all of that when we went to this compressed music. So vinyl is a, can sound really, really good and this thing could possibly give one the impression that that's not the case. Uh, but go ahead, let's uh, sail on here. Sail on down the line, by half a mile or so, and I don't really want 